Hey guys, it's me Chan Dragon, and today I will do a honest review for Honkai Channel. I've been playing for around one week. I tried to catch up with some uh, like other people that are already very fast. I believe they are already level 14 above. I'm still trying to catch up, but here actually I played decent amount of time, and I think I already experienced a little bit of the end game stuff. So I think it's a good time for me to start the review itself. So let's get started. There's couple notes and rules regarding this review. The first one is I will discuss like five main points, which is it based on story, art, artists including the voice, the animation, something like that, the gameplay for non-battles, and the one that with battles, the gacha, and is it free to play? And actually, the last one I will put the performance, but I will not rate it. And the second, this is based on my opinion and experience, so it can vary different with other people that have different experience though. So a little bit info regarding the background and my experience in turn-based RPG. Honestly, I already play a lot of turn-based RPG since I, I was a kid. So around 30 plus plus uh, turn-based RPG from console and mobile if I have to accumulate so kind of persona, Shin Megami Tensei, Pokemon, Digimon and the last one take note that this is a non-sponsor review so beware if there are some harsh comments regarding this game so if you don't like to hear like harsh comment then better to not watch this because this is brutally honest review so let's start first with the story but take note there is a little bit spoiler but i'll try to make the spoiler as small as i can the story pretty much quite straightforward for me and easy to follow where the story starts that we getting awakened by kafka and with the help of the silver world after that we kind of lost conscious and we kind of forget everything we don't know anything and later when we wake up we meet kind of another friends that call uh dan Heng and March 7 and later it will become our trio protagonist or kind of best friend and then later we kind of proceed proceed like the tutorial and we decide to join as a organization called Astral Express so this Astral Express is not only three of us we have all the, also existence from the Himekon world that feels actually more senior than us and our main job in Astral Express is to find Stellaron like, technically this Stellaron is kind of source of the disaster itself so our first journey is actually we go to the place called Bellobok so the, this Bellobok actually the Stellarons quite affect them where it makes the eternal blizzard and an eternal snow something like that so in here our job to find a Stellaron and yeah we can uh, continue our adventure here we meet a lot of people and companion we meet friends in that play something like that, blah 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 so it's pretty much quite similar with Genshin I would say it has the vibe of that and I would say it's simple and solid enough reason to MC to have an adventure and kind of get going traveling so through the Astral Express which is I feel it's kind of like quite enjoyable honestly and the interaction between Dan Heng, March 7 and MC three of them have a different kind of personality so make the story feel more dynamic and I enjoy it so honestly until right now I pretty much say it's pretty promising and I will give it 7 out of 10 so it's pretty much good and second we will talk about art so art in here will cover the visual and sound so visual and sound is kind of like character itself the animation music voice actor something like that so I have to say in here the character art is always impressive by Hoyo first it never disappoint me all of them looks very solid in fact I have to say the starting character uh, from Genshin Impact like 1.0 compared to this Honkai style it feels actually very different it feels like a lot of step up like in here the starting character even feels so good already and I also say they never disappoint uh, I have to say to me and I feel it's actually very impressive and then for the animation it actually looks cool and it is because maybe turn-based RPG so they can polish more compared in Genshin it's kind of hard because it's open world so it's pretty much understandable so in here in turn-based they can polish more so the animation actually looks cool some of them looks very good like I have Clara right now the G Clara like protection from Fire Rock it looks very giga jet I like it so much and honestly even for sure animation kind of March 7 looks cool enough for me and I quite say it's impressive and for the music and voice actor pretty much kind of on point for the music it gives kind of chill type probably just because the first areas are on like snowy snowy type so it's pretty much also on point I quite like the chill chill song from the Hoyo first it's pretty much like acceptable for me and the voice actor pretty much kind of on point I also say 
because um, I use Japanese so I don't really know sure the English but so far I hear even the English pretty much okay although I know usually Japanese have the higher standard CN also I heard and Korean pretty much solid so it's pretty much I would say music and voice actor meet the standard itself too the art in this game is pretty much that makes one of the biggest heavy lifting and to be honest the reason i want to play honkai star rail is just because the art i feel the character in here is very good and whenever i saw himeko actually i want to get that and i feel like okay i want to play but i don't know suddenly clara pop out in my pool and i feel like dang clara feels so precious right now and yeah, that is actually one of the factors that keep me playing. So yeah, it's my pretty funny for some of you, but I would say the art in here that pretty much makes me want to play this game. So my score for the art, I will give 8 out of 10, which is solid. In the next one, we will move into gameplay territory, but we will start with the non-battle first. So this is regarding the exploration, or the future, like something that not related with the battling itself though. So the first thing that I want to highlight is that unlike other mobile RPG games, where kinda usually the only have menu and then between one intersection with other intersection so if we move to battle just click the menu to battle move to this one just everything just from menu if you ask kinda example it's like kinda the Honkai third itself is only kinda have menu or kinda PGR it's kinda everything controlled by menu but in Honkai style there is, they didn't make just like that they have the world that you can explore you can interact you can talk to the people so it gives kind of the feeling of turn-based console feel so it, it like kind of console quality which is it's truly really quite a huge step up from just like other like mainstream mobile game which is i appreciate a lot in here and actually the exploration is pretty fun because there's a lot of funny interaction you i believe you already see a lot of funny meme regarding a trash can because you can get reward from the trash can like the book or something like that you can even like feel the feedback and when you talk to the girl you can get even the reward something like that it's actually pretty sad like small latest things that very satisfying for me there are even easter egg like and maybe Genshin Impact if you play and even like kind of the Honkai third but Himeko itself so yeah it's a little bit nice small thing that I would say I appreciate of course puzzle like the signature from Hoyo for itself and that's still enjoyable that's also a nice addition and this feel kind of dynamic is actually quite good especially we kind of play the other game kind of Genshin that you kind of know that the MC in Genshin is pretty much more straightforward than this one this one you know the MC to be funky and kind of goofy and stuff so they also have like wide range of reply option which is I would say pretty savage some of them like some of them serious which is I would say it's enjoyable things that I will to say it's kind of refreshing though compared to other Hoyo first game. And lastly, the world exploration pretty much feel convenient. There's a lot of quest track, the teleportation, a lot of stuff that kind of helps you. So it didn't feel kind of like a problem or kind of pressure for you or it may just make more complicated. No, it's actually still pretty much convenient. So my overall score regarding the gameplay for the non battles pretty much 7 out of 10, which is pretty much good. And we move to the another gameplay which is for the battle itself. So this one will cover for the combat, the mechanic, the end game and the feature that regarding from the environment of the battling itself though. So we know that Honkai Starter adapt with the turn-based RPG battle styles, but specifically it's more into mobile turn-based RPG style though. So if you're kinda of familiar with the Omnyoji, Raid Shadow Legends where a lot of sponsored and old summoners wars, not the current one but the old one where you only have the attack skill and ultimate the like the three attack move something like that so pretty much very very same like that though and for the Hoyo first they didn't do cooldown but they more into kind of how many attack points that you have in here so it's kind of similar with the Digimon links that already died but yeah it's same also mechanic with that and if you kind of go a little bit depth with the gameplay pretty much they have kind of elemental weakness they have shield if you use certain element it can kind of break faster something like that they have counter mechanics they have like kind of different roles healer dps something like that but in here they have the fancy name let's say the erudition the dps for aoe the healer core the abundance so they have the fancy name in here but in the end the concept still and take notes although i say this is simple mobile turn-based rpg doesn't mean that you don't need to think about strategy in fact you still need to think about strategy because this is turn-based you still need to think though even like shadow raid of legend you still need to have the strategy though so it didn't make any exception for honkai so regarding my combat experience in honkai star rail i held to be disappoint because if you kind of mirroring or kind of look back to other hoyo first game honkai impact third and genshin impact 
that they usually have their uniqueness or identity that makes this actually game it's kind of revolutionary or kind of step up compared to just like other generic mobile games so we kind of see Honka Impact right that on that time when they released it feels kind of not just mobile game like mobile action game though it feels kind of console style like that because the graphics everything it feels step up and Genshin Impact it might looks kind of Zelda right but when you play you you know that kind of the elemental reaction itself it makes a huge difference where it feels it has like their own identity that I don't think any other game adapt like the elemental reaction that work kind of Genshin Impact. Even Zelda elemental reaction didn't work like this. so it makes actually uniqueness in here. But I cannot find in Honkai Star Rail. In fact, I can find the uniqueness in terms of exploration, but not in the battle. The battle everything feels so generic. It feels like I play. <laughs> Honestly, Raid Shadow Legends though, it's just like in anime skins. Maybe some of you tried to say that, oh yeah, they make like this generic just because they want to keep to make it simple so all the first timer that never play turn-based RPG or never play can follow like this, something like that. I would say it's no excuse, they can still make a very simple turn-based RPG but yet make unique. I will give example is Pokemon though. Pokemon is, I would say, it's simple. But it has uniqueness though, every single generation. Pokemon style is only what? Four different moves. That's it. It's very simple though. Generation 8, they have the Dynamax, where you can become giant for the three turns to become so like strong and get big buff. And then Gen 9, they change different gimmick. They make, they call Terrestrial, where it's kind of similar, but it boosts your typing, but it's not three turn, it's every single turn, like until the end. So it feels actually simple, but depth. So it can cater both casual and the hardcore player though so it doesn't matter even for casual they can still follow but for the hardcore itself they can feel entertained just because a lot also for of the strategy itself so that's what i mean simple unique and it has made like pokemon have identity every single generation but i cannot find in honkai star but don't get me wrong i still enjoy it and it's pretty much still fun though honestly right now i'm enjoying using clara the counter is nonsense for me and i enjoying so much right now and now we will talk about the feature itself though right regarding the battle which is we will have the build itself the build, the build is actually very similar kind of genshin impact itself which is it's usually still good i quite like because it pretty much not so simple but it has all to be depth in in there though which is the equipment in here called the light cone or the weapon if in terms of Genshin Impact and uh, Relic in here it seems like artifact in Genshin Impact if you play and uh, kind of the character skill tree in here you can increase the talent skill ultimate attack it's pretty much same with the talents in Genshin Impact also so in here in order to ascend also we need the material that we can gather like through using the kind of we call the energy stuff or like whatever that usually in other gacha game have the energy mechanic like that. So it's pretty much also same with Genshin Impact. It's I would say 90% very similar though. Including daily, we have weekly, we have weekly boss, we have battle pass system, everything just the same. And from what I see, I think this game will not so grainy just because also we lock behind this energy system. And if we see kind of the other Hoyo first game, probably we only struggle when we kind of in the early level. But once we reach kind of high level, this is not feel so much grindy anymore, which is, I would say it's good though for the casual also. And now we talk about the end game, which is, I hate to compare with Genshin Impact, but somehow there's some of them that kind of similar, with, but instead only one. In Honka style, they have kind of two-ish, which is first one that I want to talk, which is simulated universe. In simulated universe, I kind of do. The, I will say it's kind of end game, just because in order for you to get the weekly reward is by just completing any difficulty. So I'm not sure if how to say end game, but for sure until the end of the game, you should do this just because you will get a reward and why not, right? And then the next one that I believe this is the true end game, which is called Forgotten Hall. This is have the similar concept with Spiral Abyss, where every two weeks it will reset and it will give you quite a decent amount of gems for free to play though. So this is very that I would say the Spiral Abyss of Honka Shrile, which is Forgotten Hall though. Which is all to say, it's a little bit better than Genshin just because it has two different stuff and I feel like it's good enough for casual though. And my end of score in terms of battle system in Honkai Shrile, I'll give 5 out of 10. It's enjoyable and fun enough so it's good enough to enjoy this game though. However, in terms of uniqueness and identity or kind of revolutionary compared to other Hoyo first game, 
seems kind of lag or just feels very generic in the battle system here which is I wish they kind of have though now we move to the gacha and free to play which is one another essential part in gacha game which is also saying overall the gacha in uh, Honga style is pretty much same if you play Genshin of again I hate to compare but it's just pretty much very very same which is 90 pt to get guaranteed 5 star but it's still 50 50 and 180 for the guaranteed 100 percent though but instead in this in terms of weapon or light cone itself it's a little bit better just because it's only have one so it has 80 pd same with Genshin and 75 chance to get this light cone though that feature which is I would say thankfully that's a little bit better because weapon versus Genshin is pain and besides there's a thing that I feel it feels better than Genshin Impact in terms of gacha where when you do your first 300 pull on the standard banner you can choose one of the 5 star in the standard itself though so let's say you when you are in the beginner banner you get the character that you don't want after you do the 300 pull in the standard banner and then you can choose one of them that you like maybe you like Bronya, you like Himeko, you like Yanjin, you like Clara you can just choose though without have to do reroll though this is kind of nice addition though although it's only one time and the next one is that there is no discounted package to buy the gems so it's very similar again with Genshin in fact so if you kind of come from other game usually you have like the discounted kind of gems like every patch where usually maybe 10 pool the price is $10 they, they have the package that the price is only maybe six to seven dollars so it's kind of like off couple of dollars which is pretty much kind of good but in Honkai Star Rail just because they adapt 100% of the mechanics from Genshin of the gacha itself they don't have that it's only like first time double top up and that's it they will reset every anniversary so I would say because of that it's relatively more expensive compared to other gacha game honestly if you want to top up though although it has guaranteed but the value if you want to top up is actually pretty expensive the next one that I will talk which is regarding free to play is this game free to play friendly I would say I hate to compare it with Genshin Impact but it's already familiar that's the easiest example to say yeah this is the environment of this Honkai style pretty much same with Genshin Impact where it's quiet or even relatively free to play friendly just because the force is pretty much good like right now I test Bella looks kinda pretty much a good support even only 4 star the fire trailblazer or the fire MC pretty much good good tank surprisingly March 7 is good also as a defensive system Dunhang is pretty much quite solid for the single target for free to play I believe if you feel so because of it I feel it's pretty much safe for free to play and even the, the standard I even feel it's a little bit better than just standard from Genshin Impact though when they release like Bronya is pretty much give you a lot of buff attack crit and Clara pretty much give you a huge DPS especially if they attack a lot J part right now is pretty good for defensive system and iron of them are pretty much still acceptable range which is, which is I think they learn a lot from Genshin Impact and they kinda already know how to make a balancing so there's no kinda have a feeling of power creep itself so yeah for free to play I would say it's good for you though because uh, it's the environment right now it feels friendly for free to play so and then in terms of gacha and free to play I would say I kind of neutral to uh, feel a little bit better than Genshin so because of that I would just score like 5.5 and last section that I will review which is the performance this is I will not give the score in terms of number I will just say it's smooth or not and for the Honkai Star Rail itself, I play mostly on PC and I feel that the performance itself is just smooth. I have no problem. Some of people say they have crash or lag or whatever. And my experience I don't have at all, like not any single lag at all. It's pretty much very smooth and animation, execution, everything just just smooth though. And in terms of mobile phone and smartphone, it's quite forgiving though, thankfully. I thought it will be as heavy as Genshin but turned out to be no though because in Genshin my phone cannot handle but this one can handle so that's why this is a plus though. So my overall score that the performance in this game which is good. So with all this review let's conclude though. So my conclusion with the Honkai Star Rail is that it is relatively enjoyable and worth to try especially if you kind of just casual player that look just for story just want to enjoy the character itself and exploring the stuff enjoying the chill and simple fun gameplay and yeah you should try though. It's Worth to try and I think you will enjoy it though. But the biggest downside about this game is that the combat mechanic where it feels just generic or mediocre that doesn't have like any uniqueness or revolutionary compared to other for your first game, which some of the hardcore players that play a lot of turn-based RPG may feel it's maybe not just unique, it's just like mid that doesn't really satisfying though. 
But in the end, I still think Honkai Style is pretty much enjoyable and fun game to play. It just like can be better though. So now we will discuss is it actually overrated and overhyped just because you see a lot of content creator play, YouTube and Twitch a lot of traffic for Honkai Style. Even like Genshin player didn't even play Genshin anymore. They say it's boring. They want to play more Honkai Style like that. So makes an Honkai Style very superior. Is it actually that good or is it just hopper hype on or kind of overrated though? So my take is kind of disagree. And and agree in the same time regarding offer hype and overrated i disagree just because i feel this game is quite worth it though because as a free-to-play game it's high quality though it has the world exploration that most of the turn-based mobile game doesn't have that so they adapt with the console style which is which was very good that finally something revolutionary for they add in mobile game that you can just roaming around something like that and the animation is so cool character is so cool voice actor like pretty much graphics pretty much high compared to other mobile turn-based game it's really just high quality and technos this is just free to play games and then the environment also for free to play is pretty much good just because the character i feel balanced doesn't have pvp so it feels healthier so yeah i feel kind of disagree if people say it's overrated or overhyped but if some of people say like wow the combat system or the turn-based style of the Concussion is actually very good though. I don't really like turn based, but actually, I become like to play turn based though. Just because, like, this is simple, blah blah blah, and whatever so on that they say. Something like that. And that one, I would say, yeah, it's pretty much overhyped and overrated take though. Just because, bro, it, the gameplay is same with Raid Shadow Legend. It doesn't have any difference. It's just the graphic, the execution feels smoother and whatever. The mechanics pretty much same with like Summer Wars Straight Shadow of Legends though. It's also simple, it's also have three moves, something like that. There's no different though. So if maybe before you don't like, probably there's a couple of reasons though. You don't like just because maybe the vibe, the atmosphere you don't really like, the art style you don't like, or maybe the story that you didn't like. But this one in Honka Shadow, they have those things and you feel kind of more encouraged and kind of more satisfying to play that's why it kind of changed your mind and maybe for some player this is probably the only first of their experience of turn-based rpg and they didn't know that other turn-based rpg in terms of combat making actually feels a lot better than this and the last one probably just because the hype right now the content creator influence and the community that keep talking make the situation for you to play this game feel more fun though because the game if a lot of people talking about it feels like nice because you can discuss between one another but if the game is kind of dead not so much talk it feels a lot less fun so maybe the vibe from the atmosphere itself that they're built it's pretty much encourage you also to play though so in the end i'll give my verdict my verdict for honka shadow is 6.5 it's pretty much okay it's fine enjoyable enough but it can be better i would say so yeah if you like this video feel free to hit subscribe button and like i try to cover a couple of honka shadow stuff but i need to kind of increase more my level though and yeah, I would say Clara is the best character and very precious, must protect.